Good morning. Good morning, my friends. Hello. Welcome. It's so good to see you. It's another Crafty Friday today. If you are new here, I'd love for you to pop uh, your name and your uh, location in the comments below. We'd love to give you a warm welcome. If we've not met before, my name is Tracy Fair. I'm one of the Heartfelt Creations online educators. I'm based out of Manitoba, Canada. And right now we're experiencing just our slow break into winter. We had a beautiful dumping of snow. So much of it has disappeared already because we had an absolutely gorgeous week last week which really got me thinking about spring. So if you're following us online or on our website you'll notice that we already have a winter savings promotion running right now and the wonderful thing is we have a bunch of beautiful beautiful spring florals in this savings promotion that is going to chase all of those winter blues away for you if that's what you're experiencing where you are right now. So come on in let's pop on over to the work surface and we're going to take a peek at what we're going to be working on today. Good morning, Chris. Uh, it's wonderful to see you as well today. Hello, Brenda from California. You are not having a cold winter. I bet I'm pretty safe to say. Welcome, welcome. So today, this is the project we're going to be working on. As you can see, we're going to be using the Delightful Daffodil Collection as well as the Spring Garden Collection. They pair together really, really beautifully. We're also going to be using the Diamond Dyes. Now, all of those that we're going to be using today, you will find at 40% off in the Winter Savings Promotion. So I wanted to kind of show you how you could mix and match so many of these different ele ele elements together. So... Before we begin, let's take a look at our um, card base. I think we're going to work through this step by step today. Starting with card base, using one collection, and then finishing off with the flower making. Now, the one thing I did want to let you know about the Winter Savings Promotion is that it is going to be running through December 7th. That's next Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. or while supplies last. So um, you'll want to pop the stuff into your cart quickly today so that you are able to take advantage of the 40% savings. And of course, if you're an insider member, you have an additional 20% savings on top of that as well well as when well as, as well as so many of our other perks including your free shipping if you're in the US and of course the 20% um, off for our international friends access to all of our online classes which are just phenomenal they will teach you so many different ways to do flower shaping with different flowers gifts for friends and loved ones such as baskets or home decor again a wonderful wonderful um, investment becoming an insider member so I'm going to pop this over to the side for just a second and you're going to see I have this one started here already. So this card base I've gone a bit larger because I really wanted to show you how you could use these flowers to create a large card simply because the hyacinth comes in two different sizes and so does the daffodil. So today we're just going to um, see how we can work those sizes together onto a larger size card. You can also bring them down to a six by six, five by seven or four and a quarter by five and a half as well. If you're interested in making a six by six size card, that would be this inner portion, the pink and the white. That's what that would end. However, I wanted to go ahead and make this a little bit larger to showcase and, um, show you how to mix and match these different flowers a little bit more easily. So let's talk paper collections first off. I have mixed and matched papers from both of the collections, the Delightful Daffodil and the Spring Garden. You're going to see very beautiful pastels, um, a bit of darker green, a bit of a brighter yellow in one. We are a little bit more bright in the Spring Garden collection. It's got a lot of wonderful purple hues as well. Whereas in the Delightful Daffodil, we're really soft with those pastels for the Easter season. And that's something you need to keep in mind when you're stocking up on your paper collections right now. These are perfect for any time of the year, but this is going to be your go-to for the Easter season as well. Good morning, Nancy. It's so good to see you. I'm so glad you're enjoying the card today. Good morning, Beverly wonderful to see you as well so you can see I've kind of started our base here for us just because this is going to be a little bit of a longer um, live because we're going to be shaping a bunch of different flowers so here I've gone ahead and done my die cutting for just my basic squares use just my paper trimmer I've used the 
diamonds and lace. This is my backdrop for this portion of this card. You're going to see it's right here. I've done it off to the side. It has that beautiful edging along the bottom. That you're going to be able to see that there. So there are beautiful insets here that you can die cut the different pieces out of this as well. I've gone ahead and I've left it solid because that's where I've gone and stamped my um, sentiment, okay? I wanted it to create a bit of a frame. So this is the one, it reminds me a bit of a trellis. I thought it was perfect for the, um, the daffodil and the hyacinth. Then of course we have the lacy diamond and I did just check. Unfortunately, this one has already sold out um, online. If you go ahead and click on the notify me when back in stock and add your email, you will receive notification when that comes back into stock. But here you can see I've used it to overlap on the background. I've used that very narrow foam tape that we have online at www.heartfeltcreations.us. It's a really nice thin foam tape that is perfect for all of this um, different layering. What I've also done is I've edged this die cut in pink. If I pull it closer, I think maybe you can see that a little bit, just so it's going to stand off a little bit from that white. Otherwise it was appearing so very, very white. Of course, I've cut out the center cut out the center here and actually what I did was I wanted it to be a little bit larger so I used the third size down in here to cut out the center there. You're going to see I've created a green frame here. I've done that by using the two and nesting them together to create that frame. I wanted to show you we're not using the eyelet diamond today but I did want to show you how that turns out as well. You could easily have used this in the smaller size as well, but that this gives you that beautiful eyelet edging as well. So you can see these mix and match absolutely beautifully together. They're made to use together the eyelet diamond, the diamond basics, the lacy diamond, and the diamonds and lace. They're going to give you beautiful, beautiful backgrounds to build upon. While we're talking about the sentiment, that is from the Friendship Sentiments. You can see they have all the different occasions here. Sending you a hug, a special place in my heart. Happy Valentine's Day for later on in February. And your one in a million is the one that we're using here today. I've used the Vibrant Fuchsia to stamp that just to tie in with the hyacinth that we're going to be creating. Luna, you're asking what size is the card base that I'm demonstrating? This is a seven by seven. So that's the size I went with today, just so it would really show up the flowers nicely on camera. Um, and it was a little bit, I'm putting a little bit larger, chunkier flowers on today. So I really wanted you to be able to see how they were going to uh, work together. All right. So then of course I've added just with my dries clear, that beautiful diamond frame, just to make that center pop because it's very pink at the moment with some yellow, right? So moving along, let's color up some images. This is the Delightful Daffodil and Hyacinth stamp. This comes from the Delightful Daffodil collection. You can see it's a really nice substantial sized image and we're going to use two of them today and you're going to also notice how beautifully these hyacinth would tie in if we wanted to use them as well so of course that coordinating die makes it very quick and easy for you to go ahead and uh, die cut this once we're done coloring i've stamped this one in olive i wanted this one to be a little bit bolder in the background so i'm Grabbing my buttercup here, and that's what we're going to start with. Good morning, Janet, my friend. It's so very good to see you. Glad you could join us today. Using my stack and store dauber, I'm just going to go in and start coloring up in circular motions. Now you can add as much ink or as little ink as you want. I want this to be a little bit brighter to show up in the background so I'm going to kind of try and create this with quite a vibrant yellow hue so 
So again, super quick and easy coloring, circular motions. I'm gonna go back in here and just add a little bit of darker accenting so the image isn't just totally falling flat. A little bit here in the center. And you can see that was really super quick and easy to color up. For our foliage, we're going to use some leaf green. It's a really pretty nice green for all of the different foliage. And again, circular motions. You're just coloring up the stem, the leaves. The wonderful thing about our stack and store daubers is you can get into pretty tight corners because of their triangular shape. You'll notice that if you just kind of add some color to the tip of the triangle, you're going to get into um, all of these images really, really nicely. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back in with a little bit of the olive. And I'm just going to go up portions of the image here with that little bit of darker color. Just again, so that image isn't falling totally flat. When you're adding the two colors or making something a little bit darker, you're giving that image a little bit more of a realistic look and you can see how pretty that's going to be. So again, coordinating dye, we would run that through our die cutting machine. And as I mentioned before, we would be using two of these today. One of these you can see I've already added here, being careful not to cover up the uh, one in the year one in a million. And I've popped both of these up off the card just to give them some dimension. As I mentioned before, I really wanted that initial diamond dye to look like a trellis. So it looked like everything was just kind of growing along the fence or the trellis there. We'll just pop these coverings off. And this one we're going to put on upside down. So that's something you can always do is play with your images to see how they're going to frame your decorative backgrounds the best. And you can see this here is going to very nicely build us a beautiful background with some extra foliage for the flowers we're going to be adding in uh, the future here, okay? Jean, you love the way you've layered the die cuts for added dimension. You wouldn't have thought of that. Yes, just even adding that little bit of pink color to that one makes it pop off the white as well. And just creating that really nice frame, dimensional frame, so that your sentiment is sitting kind of inside and uh, there's some dimension around it. That's a really great way to add some interest to your card. So we're going to move this to the side for now. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on our flowers. We're going to start with the daffodil here. This is the spring daffodil. You can see there's two different sizes here. We're going to be using the smaller size today. Uh, we're going to be making, uh, or I'll make one, but we're going to add two of them to our card just so I can show you how they're going to cluster together. Here, we have the coordinating dies, which are going to make it super quick and easy for us to be able to cut a multitude of different petals at once. And we're also going to be using the 3D daffodil shaping mold. You'll see it's been perfectly constructed to coordinate with our die cuts. It's going to make all of the shaping of our petals and pieces super quick and easy for us. So to start, I have stamped the daffodil in goldenrod. It's a beautiful, rich um, gold color. But we're going to color it up with the buttercup because I just love 
love, love original daffodils. Don't you like just the pure yellow brightness? They just remind me so much of spring. They just bring such a feeling of hope when you start to see the daffodils popping through after a long winter, don't they? So I'm going to just color this up again, circular motions, nothing hard about this, super quick and easy. To build each daffodil, you will need two of the petal pieces and then one of the um, trumpet pieces, okay? That looks good. We'll color up one of these, same technique, very quick and easy, just circular motions. Just like that. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to grab my pieces that I have already die cut and we're going to set this aside for just a moment. And you'll see here I have the two pieces. I'm going to go back in with my buttercup and I'm just going to add some interest and some brightness on the tips of these so that they are a little bit brighter yet when we're going to add them to our card. They're going to have a really nice character just by inking the edges of our petals here. Okay, we're going to do the same thing to the top of our trumpet portion. And now because this is going to be shaped, you can shape it either with the stamp side out or the stamp side in. I always prefer to do it with the stamp side in so that when you're looking down on the flower, you're actually seeing the stamped image with the rest of the stamped portion. So here you can see, I'll try and get up close. You can see the stamped image on the inside that matches the stamping of the petals on the outside. Whereas here, you'll just see that we've done some yellow shading on the back. So that's what we're going to do real quickly here as well. I'm just going to add some buttercup here just so that it isn't completely white when we have this flower built together. A little extra step but I think you're going to be much more satisfied with it when you have your flower completed if you have the back colored as well. Now as you can see here on this piece there are some etched in lines. Those lines are partially cut with our die already. We're just going to finish them up and just go in and make sure that they are open and ready. Okay. So all you're doing is snipping in to open up those lines. Next, we're going to grab our shaping mold right here. And you'll see I have some in here already. I've opted to do the petal pieces side down and the trumpet side up just because of the way I want to go ahead and fold the trumpet piece. You'll see here I can do up to three layers at one time. I've done two for the one today but this is really quick and easy if you do two or three layer at a time. I'm going to pop this in here. Now I should have mentioned earlier I have been using our deluxe flower shaping paper which has been specially engineered for the flower shaping process. So it's going to keep the color that you're using of your ink pure. It's going to um, take on the tiny bit of water we're going to use to break the fibers to do the flower shaping and um, you're going to have beautiful and consistent results even each and every time. So again, tiny spritz of water. We don't want to go crazy because too wet and they're going to tear and not keep their shape well. And I spray each layer a little bit as I layer them up. We would clamp this together. I use my Big Shot to do all of my flower shaping. So I would do a... Um, clear plate on top, clear plate on bottom, run that through my die cutting machine, and then here's my beautiful pieces. We are going to do a little bit of hand shaping here as well. 
I'm going to pop these guys and just give them a little roll here in the center so that they pop up. And this one here, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our golf tool and we're actually going to give this just a little bit of a turn out. So you're just going to turn this around your golf tool and we'll have to do this a little bit more later once we have it all finished, but this is going to give us a good start. Just like that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to just start to bring this together. Just like this. And see how nicely that's going to meet together there like that. I'm going to grab some hot glue. And I'm going to put some... on this tab here. There's a tab in here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, need a little bit more glue here. Just like that. And try not to burn ourselves here. And just round that and let it set for just a second. So there you can see our trumpet is slowly starting to come together. You will see a hole at the bottom there. That's all right. That's supposed to be there. We're just going to fold these pieces in ever so slightly, one on top of the other. This doesn't have to be perfect. This is all going to be hidden a little bit later. But you can see how that folds together to become flat, just like that. But before we finish that off, we want to add some stamens. So we have some pretty yellow stamens here in the pastel pearl medium. I do believe we have some yellow in the bright as well. So either of those packages is going to work for you. Because they are threaded stamens and they don't have the wire in them, they come like this. So what you're going to do is you're just going to bunch them up together, slip a florist wire through the center and just twist it around. So florist wire looks like this. You can find this at Michael's, uh, Joanne's, even the dollar store. Uh, so it doesn't have to be expensive. It's a consumable product that you don't have to spend tons on. We're going to pop this through the hole. I like to add a tiny bit of glue here at the bottom just to kind of seal it. And then we're also going to add some glue here just to seal that on the back as well. So there you can see how the stamens are now sitting up in your daffodil. We are going to set this aside to dry and we will finish the construction of that daffodil later on. That's why I wanted to start with that one because I know that one takes a little bit of time to move on to uh, the next step as well. Next, we're going to talk about the fragrant hyacinth, also part of the um, Spring Garden collection, which is currently at a 40% off online. Here you'll see we have two different sizes of hyacinth as well as five little petal pieces. We're going to be using the larger today. Um, it pairs beautifully with the daffodil, the small daffodil that we're using today. And of course, again, we have the coordinating dies which make it super quick and easy for you. And as well as the 3D hyacinth shaping mold. Look at all the petals you can do at one time and imagine how many more you can do when you layer them up three layers at a time. So again, a tool that you definitely don't want to be without. Now for time's sake, I have started this here already. I'm going to grab a tweezer because these guys get kind of warm to be trying to do this with a hot glue gun and your fingers. Oh, 
before we start, how about if we color it all up? Hey, talk about jumping ahead of myself. Sorry, guys. Here you're going to see this is the large hyacinth. Again, I've stamped it in the olive simply because this is the only portion we're going to be seeing. We're going to layer up the rest on here uh, once we are done building our flower. So olive, we're going to use our same leaf green that we did. And just circular motions, we're going to add our color. Now for today's creation, I'll be using two of these because we're going to be one to, using one to create the flower and we're going to be using the other one just for a foliage piece to go ahead and fill out in the card. Once again, a little bit with the olive just so it doesn't stay flat. I want that image to have a little bit of interest. There you can see how that kind of brings it to life. It now is a two-tone rather than just one straight green. For our beautiful little hyacinth blossoms, we have used the Vibrant Fuchsia. I'm going to color them in with Pink Peony. So I'm gonna go ahead, circular motions again, Super easy coloring technique, fast, doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not worried about hitting every petal with this because we're going to go in and we're going to actually add some of the Vibrant Fuchsia to it yet as well. Again, I want those blossoms to not fall flat when they're on the hydrangea, or sorry, the hyacinth. So I find by mixing my colors ever so slightly, no two will be the same and you will have a beautiful pop of different colors throughout the flower. So I don't know if that's going to show up on camera very well, but there it is. You can see some of them are the light pink peony while the others have taken on the more vibrant fuchsia. So that's going to give you kind of a multi-color hued hyacinth. Of course, next thing we would do is we would run this through our die cutting machine. We would have all of our pieces cut for us. Again, there's the base we'll be using. These are the tiny little petal pieces we'll be using. And here you can see I have a whole bunch ready already in the shaping mold. I'm going to just go ahead and drop them out of there. These guys I like to put face side down. Again, there's no wrong way to do this. You're going to get a different look if you place the stamp side up versus stamp side down. So you get to be the designer, you get to choose. A tiny spritz of water. Remember that paper's engineered to take that tiny bit of water. Again, running it through my die cutting machine to get those beautiful little petal pieces that we'll be working with next. These guys will need a tiny bit of hand shaping as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grab my mat here. I'm going to fold it in half because I want these guys to have a lot of dimension. And you can see how deep I'm able to push into that center to give that a really nice deep dimension. Whereas if I just leave it this way, you can see one is definitely a tighter flower, deeper flower than the other. So for the hyacinth, I really like these to be tight, compacted little flowers. So again, I just fold my mat and give them all a really sharp poke there in the center. We're almost done. One more, there we go. So we'll put that off to the side for now. Actually, I think I'm gonna use that 
as my glue mat here for just a second. You can see I've gone ahead and started this one simply because this does take a little bit of time to build this flower. I'm just going to grab my glue gun and put it over on the other side of me here because we're going to start grabbing petals. I'd like to use my tweezer because I said, as I said, this hot glue is warm to the touch. And we all know what that feels like. I just begin pushing it in where I want it to nest. The tweezer is also a great tool to manipulate those petals to get them how you want them to stand together. You can see I've gone and created this to be quite tight. They are really bundled quite close together. And we'll just keep building this until we don't see any of that green background anymore. I'd love to know what is your spring favorite spring flower that appears. I know I always love waiting to smell the lilacs. They always tell me spring is, is near and happening. I'd love to see the hyacinth and the daffodils when they come out in the store. I will very often take time to smell the hyacinth as well. There's just something beautiful about these spring flowers after a long winter, isn't that? So there you can see we finished our first layer. So when I'm building the hyacinth, I like to actually build a partial layer on top of this. You'll see here that I do have some of the white from these um, petal pieces showing because I didn't color the back. That is something you could do as well. You could definitely color the back as well if you uh, were upset and not liking the white. I think the white is a nice play off of the pink here and so much of it is going to disappear in our next step here as well. I just didn't go through the work of coloring each and every one of these from the back this time. So when I'm building the hyacinth I really like to go ahead and start adding just a bit of a second layer. Not all the way through tightly compacted the way we have been doing here um, for the initial layer but simply so that I can start having this be a really beautiful dimensional flower just as it is in nature and you'll see how as we start adding this second layer on top they really start coming to life Just have to give the glue a little bit of time to set there. You can kind of nestle them in and among. Can you start to see the difference already? Can you start to see how the bottom is now starting to look more rounded? You have that multi-dimensional layer, right? You can see how it's starting to come, come together. You definitely could leave it at one layer. There's nothing wrong with that. I just wanted to show you how to make this a really super dimensional, beautiful flower that really resembles um, what it looks like in nature. Ruth, you like the white look on some of those flowers? I agree. With certain colors and certain flowers, I feel it's a beautiful way that um, they're accented almost, right? And you haven't done any extra work to um, have it appear that way. It's just a beautiful accent. I 
We're almost done here. Two more, and I think we'll be covered. And our last one here. You can see how I started. As I came to the top, I started putting in fewer and fewer. I was adding threes and then I started adding twos. Let's get this guy to stick. So there you can see now how that becomes a beautiful full hyacinth flower. You're correct, assembling these is not hard at all. You were cautious and slow on the first one, but after it was so easy. They really are so easy. And you know, I always say practice makes perfect. My first one is always my practice one and we improve from there, right? Absolutely. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add this onto our flower base. I'm just gonna use some hot glue here real quickly. And we're gonna pop this on here. Make sure we're sort of matching there. And now our hyacinth has a stem. So perfect. We can set this one aside and let it dry until we're ready to work with it. We will come back to our daffodil. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to add a little bit of hot glue here in the center, offset our petals, and just press that down. You can see how they're all going to start to pop up. Quick and easy, just like that. Our cup shape has dried. We're going to go ahead and snap the wire off. I'm going to grab my golf tool one more time and just pull the edge over so that it has that traditional daffodil look. You can see how now it's folded over and cupped like that. We're going to add our glue here in the center and just simply stick that down and hold it until it's ready. Good morning, Patricia, my friend. Yes, it's so great to share my morning with you. I know we haven't been together now for a few Fridays, so it was great to be back again. So there you can see our pretty little daffodil is put together. Next, we are ready to start assembling on our card. So because I want a lot of room at the bottom here for my daffodils, I'm going to kind of push my hyacinth further up top. And then we're going to just start playing around to make sure that these two fit. And you can see how nicely they are going to fit there at the bottom like that. So we're going to add this to our card. just up there like that. And you can see how pretty those delightful daffodils are creating our cluster in the background for us so that it ties in with our larger daffodil flowers that are dimensional. Um, remember I said we were going to use two of these. I'm going to just go ahead and cut this off of this stamped image. I'm just wanting the foliage from here, just like that. I'm going to tidy up here a little bit. Just like that. I'm going to go in and I'm going to just cut into two. 
I'm going to grab my flower shaping mat. Quick spritz of water just so those fibers are going to break easily. A little bit of rounding. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut into this leaf just following that stamp line. Maybe a little bit deeper. Then it's going to allow me to have them going in every which direction. Just like that. Let's do the same thing with this guy here. I'm just going to go ahead and follow that line there like that. We'll have this one come forward. Quick and easy. It's going to give us a little bit of dimension here. I'm only going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom. I wanted to make it look like that stem is kind of still attached here just in case we're going to see part of it. But now you're going to see how this leaf has some wiggle room and some play. We're actually going to add our daffodils here before I go and add the second foliage piece just to make sure we're going to have room. Let's do something like that. How does that look? And let's add our second one. I'm popping that one a little bit lower and off at a bit of a different angle so that you can kind of see they aren't growing necessarily the same. How is this gonna fit in here? This should work just like that. And you'll see how that will now fill out that portion of the card there because it's a little bit bare behind our daffodils. All we have to do is tuck this in here. And now we have some extra foliage pieces that have covered up that little bald spot. And of course, we're not ever finished until we have finished our flowered centers and given them some glitter. So we are going to use Two two pink prills on the center of the hyacinth flowers. So they're a very light pink. I didn't want to take away from the beautiful color ink that we had used. So I wanted to stick with a very neutral colored pink that was going to complement the pink peony that we had used um, in the design, that pink peony color. So there you can see how those beautiful flowers are going to be finished off with those prills. Okay, I'm just going to put these guys back into their container and then we'll move on to glittering technique. So for today the glitter I'm using is the Crystal Ultrafine Transparent Glitter, my absolute favorite. Got some paper pieces in there. I'm going to grab a piece of Hydra sponge, just add some dries clear, and I'm going to start sponging all the different areas on the flowers, on the leaves, and we will sprinkle some glitter on. And there you can see how it's going to have beautiful frosted tips. Once that glue dries white, it's going to be just a beautiful sparkle, shimmer and shine that you're left with. I'll give you a close up of the finished product one more time. Here you'll really be able to see the sparkle because it's all finished. Isn't that so very pretty? I've done the, um, the stamped images here as well that we've done in the background. 
But Linda, can you estimate what postage would cost for a card like that? You know, this is this one is so large, this really isn't one I would post. I would probably hand deliver. I'm in Canada and I would say it would probably cost me about $15 to send if I wanted to send something like this. This is something that I would design and hand deliver um, for a special occasion. But you could um, definitely create a box to mail it. But yes, this size card is going to be uh, expensive to send. So again, this is one that I would probably hand deliver um, to a special friend or loved one, just because the flowers are quite large and quite bulky. I'm so glad you've been able to spend time with me today. I apologize. I have kept you so very late today. Um, but there was so much from the winter savings promotion that I wanted to share with you. So be sure to catch, uh, to snatch those beautiful florals from these uh, delightful daffodil as well as the spring garden collection. You are going to love growing your very own paper hyacinths and daffodils. So thanks again for spending time with me. I can't wait to see you again soon. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.